everyone and welcome to Live Art Mini from Inside Out Studio. I am your host, Stephen Smith. So I am the Art Education Coordinator here at Inside Out Studio and we are broadcasting live from our site right here in downtown Hamilton, Ohio. I want to welcome you all. Give us a like, a thumbs up, smiley face, whatever you like. If you are watching, feel free to comment and say that you're here with us today too, especially if you're one of our artists. We want to give a big hello out to all the Inside Out artists. We haven't been able to see them for almost a month now, so we hope that you know, all of you are taking care of yourself and being safe, and, and we will get the studio open, up and running as soon as we feel it is safe for everyone to come back. So I do want to say that if you do like to make a comment or ask a question, you'll be sending those to Kim Neal Davis. She is our marketing and finance uh, manager, and she's up in the office right now, so she'll be relaying some messages to me if you do want to say hi, hello, or make a comment. So you can also check out our previous Live Art Minis because we do this every Wednesday. We've got four others that you can find on our YouTube channel and you can find that link in the comment section as well. So we are going to jump into what I did last week. Let me click on some things here. Bear with me. Getting my technology. Hey Jody, I hope you're having a good time at home. I hope you're ready to make some art today with me. We miss you. Glad that you're watching. So for today's lesson, we're going to look at making cardboard masks. So my thought is, let's try to make something that you all might have laying around at home. Some materials, that is. Something that you can turn and elevate into a piece of artwork. So we're going to be looking at a few different ways to turn cardboard into a mask, whether that's three-dimensional and oversized, like an artist Wayne White I'm going to show you, or if it's just a smaller, simple, wearable mask that you might want to wear for fun. I did prepare an example leading up to the class. I'm not sure what you've been doing at home, but my wife and I have been enjoying Tiger King with Joe Exotic, so I've got my large... Hey, y'all watching out there? Is Carol Baskin there? So we've got our oversized Joe Exotic Tiger King mask made out all out of cardboard, I should say. So here's my example for this week. So you always want to have a source of inspiration. Mine was Big Joe. So he's going to be joining us for today's lessons. I'm going to show you some techniques that led to the creation here. Uh, Jonathan McDowell, I hear that you're out there as well. Hello, Jonathan. Thanks for joining in today. So I'm going to gather some materials, some things that I asked you to gather as well. Let me pull up the list here on the screen. Oh, we do not have the list. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, we said we're going to need some cardboard. So that could be various pieces. If you've got some old boxes laying around, I know a lot of people are doing some FedEx ordering, some Amazon ordering. Things are de being delivered now more than ever, so cardboard should be something that you have. Uh, if you got some duct tape, we do need some very secure adhesive, so get some duct tape. I'll locate mine here momentarily. I also have a hot glue gun, so this is something that's going to be even better than duct tape if you have that at your disposal. Uh, for cutting, a nice trusty pair of scissors. Since we are cutting cardboard, you do not want to use anything that's too nice. Some older scissors, a little bit rougher around the edges, are going to be your best bet for cardboard. Or if you're practicing safety, you could use an X-Acto knife and also have a nice surface if you're going to use an X-Acto knife to cut on. That way you're not carving into tables and surfaces in your house. So first things first, you're going to need some kind of inspiration. So I'm going to be creating a mask from scratch. We've got Joe Exotic here already. So I'm going to pick a new source. So what I like to do, first things first, is come up with a plan. So I'm just going to get a piece of paper, 
some drawing utensil here and then come up with a basic plan. I'm going to do something more life size, not gigantic like this guy here. So just start with a circle base for what the mask will be. Like I said, this is just coming up with a drawing and a plan for what's going to be made out of cardboard. And one thing I want to do is show you how to make some three-dimensional elements, some relief elements pop off of your mask. So what I'm thinking of for Mr. Scrooge is he has that bill there. And really want to make it pop off the surface of the mask. So I'm going to draw that in. So this is a front view. I do hear that we're having some technical difficulties that when I switch off screen, you cannot hear the audio, so I'll be aware of that for the rest of the broadcast. So here is the duck bill, and this is shown from the front view coming off. And then on that bill, you also have the monocle, or the glasses, I should say, there. So that's going to be sitting on top of his duck bill. And I'm just going to put in the eyes. And he's got some little tufts off to the side of his face, which will be separate pieces of cardboard cut out. Kind of like this. And then also a hat. I'm not going to have time to make the whole mask with you today. And saying that, I just want to remind you to take your time. You don't have to rush through this, and I certainly don't expect you to come and make a mask in the exact same time that I'm broadcasting. So this is something that you can take the tips and lessons and kind of take those at home, come back and rewatch the broadcast if you need to, and then spend your time. Take your time, experiment, try different things with the cardboard, see how you can use it, and make your mask. Just finish off the drawing here, and then I'll jump into the cardboard. So I'm going to size it up to my face. I'm going to start with that circle base, which was the first thing I drew on the paper. So just get the good size going, something that you can work off of if you're working at home. Use a pencil, something light, maybe something you're not going to see after you are done creating the mask. I'm going to use some black Sharpie, that way it's a little bit more visible for you to see at home. And then, as I'm starting to cut out the head for the mask here, if you're using scissors, it's going to be easier to kind of work in a geometric fashion by cutting out a rectangle or a square first before you start making the circular cuts. So now that we've got our base cut out, we can start cutting into the circle. Scrooge McDuck head coming around. I'm going to work kind of simple at first. Everything starts with a base, so we have our circle to work off of. Now, the first thing I'm going to tackle is going to be the eyes. The eyes, I'm going to use a technique which is just layering the cardboard. And in the art world, that's called relief. When you do something in relief, that means it's coming off the surface and adds a little bit of dimension to it. So, in my example here with Joe Exotic, Hey y'all, be careful on the goods. So we've got some relief eyes. You can see the pupil is on top of the eye base. And when I was looking at this picture, it seems like his, his bottom lids were a little bit puffy there. So I added another layer of cardboard right underneath there for the bottom lids. It just adds a little bit of extra dimension, which also creates a little bit of a shadow and makes your cardboard mask pop a little bit. So let's do Scrooge's eyes. So as always, I'm going to draw first, come up with a plan, just to make sure the size is right as well. All right, I'm getting word that Devin Ragland is out there watching, so thank you for joining us, Devin. I hope you're doing well out there, and I hope you're still making signs and doing your art at home. So I picked Scrooge McDuck because I used to use him in a number of my paintings. I used to do a series of toy paintings about 10 years ago before I started to do Hamilton scenes. And also because a number of our artists love Disney, 
I know my son loves Disney. If you have the Disney Plus out there, you have access to almost all the movies that they've created. That's a, a lot of what we do now is talk about the movies and the TV shows that we're watching since we're at home. So going in to cut out the eyes for Scrooge. So I've switched to an X-Acto knife. What you want to do is use good practices when you're cutting out your X-Acto knife with an X-Acto knife, I should say, is always cut away from you. So I'm cutting at an angle going away from my body, not cutting directly towards myself. That would be silly. And I'm moving the cardboard instead of moving the knife. So I don't want to start to twist and curve that knife because for one thing, you'll have less control. And for another, you'll be cutting towards yourself at some point. So why we're building with cardboard is a number of artists have done this in terms of mask makers and artists. It's because it's a good material. It's flexible, it's pliable, it's very easy to find, common, cheap, lightweight. But it's also fairly sturdy, so it holds up a little bit as well. I'm just gonna peel the eyes out, start to place them on here. So trying to be versatile based upon the materials that you have at home. So I'll use a few different methods here. For one thing, the easiest and the quickest would be the big guns. You got your hot glue. So we're just gonna put down some hot glue. It's gonna keep our eye in place. Another method you could use Duct tape, something fairly sturdy. Scotch tape's not going to work for this one. You need something a little bit more durable for cardboard. So if you are using tape at home, you want to use the, the double Mac method. Roll it over on itself and place on the underside of what you're working with. All right, Dwayne Sparks, are you out there? I hear Dwayne is watching at home as well. So hello to Dwayne and Jean. Thank you for tuning in again. I think you've seen every single live art MIDI, if I'm not mistaken. So I've got the Scrooge McDuck eyes going right there. I'm gonna do the pupils next. And maybe I wanna do something a little bit different. Maybe I wanna make them pop off the surface even more. So I'm gonna make two little cylinders that come up for the eyes. So I'm not sure how long those strips of cardboard have to be, but I'm going to form my cylinders out of, first of all, cardboard strips. So I'm not going to pop off too much. Sometimes you need two cuts with that cardboard just to make sure it goes through all the way. And then I'm going to make this into a circle for the eye. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you another technique. Something that you might do if your cardboard's a little bit stiff is to grab some water. So just like, you know, if you get paper wet, it's going to be softer, might even turn to pulp. But if you put some water onto your cardboard, it's going to be a little bit easier to use. And then I also here we have another viewer. Hello to Terry out there. Are you watching DuckTales right now? Is that what I hear? So we also miss Terry, who's our direct care staff here at the art studio. She also hasn't been here with us for a month since our studio is not in operation. We hope you're doing well. I hope your kids are doing well. So I've made my circle here with my piece of cardboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue that real quick to secure it. This is a tight glue, you gotta watch those fingers. Hold it down for a few seconds, make sure that glue sticks. That should be good. Now we're gonna glue the circle onto the surface. And 
And then we have his pupil. So that adds a little bit of dimension. Like I said, once you get more 3D, you're going to have that shadow interacting as well. Make it more dynamic. And you can see from the side view that you actually have the pupil coming off the face. I'm going to do the second one really quick here. Like I said, just add a little bit of water to your cardboard. Rub it in and soften it up. And that's going to make it much easier for you to bend into curved shapes such as the hat bill here for Mr. Exotic. And glue down that second circle of cardboard. So those of you playing along at home, what are your inspirations? Who would you make a mask of? I know we are very far out from Halloween, but you can wear a mask any time of the year if you want. So are there any celebrities, characters, cartoons that you'd like to see a mask made out of? I'm going to get a second eye on here. Let that glue dry for a second, secure it. Now we have two eyes, two pupils. And let's move on to the bill. So like we said, the bill it's kind of curved. If we're going to stick to the true uh, look of Scrooge McDuck, he's got a curved bill coming off the surface. So let's think about how thick that should be. Let's say maybe that thick. So I'm going to cut a strip of cardboard that thick, which is going to act as the bill. I'm going to switch my X-Acto knife. Like I said, two cuts on the exacto. You don't want to force it through. That's how accidents happen. And then, since that bill is curved, we're just going to add some water to soften up this cardboard. Let that soak in just for a second. That's going to make it a little easier for us to start to bend and play with that curved shape. And then with the bill, I'm also going to show you how to attach a piece coming off the surface of your mask, just like we did with the nose, the goatee, and the bill here for Joe Exotic. So it's curving that way. I'm going to spray this back side of the cardboard, get some water in there on this side. Start to play. Half of art is playing. So don't go into this thinking you have to be perfect or it has to look amazing. Make sure to just go with the happy accidents that Bob Ross always talked about. I'm going to start to form my duck bill until I really visualize it and start to see it. So it kind of peaks up in the middle goes down and curves back up in the corners. So I'm just going to start to mold that cardboard now that the water's working into it. It's a little bit softer, easier to use, it's bending easier. And I'm going to start to cut it off right about here. I'll switch to my scissors for all the scissor users out there. A little bit tougher with the scissors, but feels like it's also kind of like a forearm workout as well. So I'm just going to curve the front of the bill. I'll try to put it so this is what it looks like from the front. Show you some different angles now that we're starting to make it happen from the top view as well. So it's going over the edges a little bit. I'm going to trim this down a little bit more and then show you how to attach it onto the surface. And we're going to be doing that by making some tabs into the back of the bill that will actually slide through the cardboard that you can secure on the back side of your mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tab. I've got too many things on the table. So I'm going to draw in and create tabs on the back side. Make a tab at the very top too, 
just to secure the peak of the beak. So basically I'm drawing the lines where I'm going to be cutting, making my cuts so that there's going to be three little spots sticking outside of the back of the bill. And then after we attach that, I'll show you how to secure it on the back of the mask so no one will ever see. And then I'm going to switch over to share some artists with you, some images I prepared. Like I said, just take your time at home. Feel free to experiment, play around with it. If it doesn't work the first time, scrap it, get another piece of cardboard out, and try again. These are things to do in your spare time, things to do for fun. So now I have three little tabs sticking up, which are going to be sticking out of the back of the bill. I'm just going to visualize where it's going to be placed on the front of the mask. And then make a notch or draw a line where I'm going to cut a hole into the front of the mask. So I've got the three spaces right there, one, two, three. I'm going to cut a slot right into the mask and slide those tabs through and secure them on the back. That way we have a three-dimensional element sticking out. Just jumping back and forth. Different utensils you might have at home. Probably easiest with the X-Acto knife. Just to really pop that out. So if you have to use your scissors for this part, you would just carefully poke through and then cut out that opening. I can fill that in the forearms, getting a nice little workout here, making a mask. One more to do right in the middle, and then we'll secure it. Poke through there. Now that we've got the three holes sticking through the mask, we're going to go ahead and slide our tabs through. Force them in there, pull them through the back, that metal one's giving me a little trouble. There we go, now we're pulling it through. So you can see that bill is secured from the front, you've got your three tabs coming through the back. And what's also nice about cardboard is that you can split it into two. So once it's through the back, you just want to separate your cardboard in two sections like that. And at that point, you could either hot glue down both tabs on either side, or just go for the duct tape. Because guess what? It's the back of the mask. No one's going to see it. You don't have to worry about craftsmanship too much on the back side of things. I'm just going to secure some duct tape on the tabs there. Holds it in place, nice and secure. You've got your duct bill going on there. So I'm also going to show you the back of a Joe Exotic. You can see all the tabs sticking through, some with duct tape and some with hot glue. And then, boom, almost got poked by that beautiful mullet. So don't worry about the craftsmanship on the back side, that's the side that people don't see. What they're looking at is the front and how cool it is with your mask popping out. Now I am going to switch over some images here. I did hear that the audio is not working when I do that. So I'm going to intro the first artist I want to share with you. So his name is Wayne White and he is one of my favorite artists. He does a wide variety of different types of art from you know, altering some flea market paintings to creating masks to building puppets. So he started out his art career as a puppeteer for Pee Wee's Playhouse, if you remember that show back in the day from Saturday mornings. 
So he would build the puppets by hand and also do some of the voices. And he also does these large scale caricature like masks as well. So I am going to go silent as I share some pictures with you. So that last image there was actually Wayne White himself. Let me just fade back in. So you can see that some of his artworks and puppets are really quite large scale. So they're fun, they're caricatures, they're quirky, and they're mostly almost all made out of cardboard. So that shows you what you can do with like a really, really basic material. If you get really creative, you can elevate it to something amazing and crazy like that. Uh, next artist I'm going to share with you is a local artist here in Hamilton, Ohio, and her name is Leah Hughes. And if you've seen her artwork around, it's been in the Almond Sisters Bakery, it's been in North Second Bar, and it's also been in the Art Space Gallery as well as the Fitness Center. But she makes these amazing animal sculptures all out of cardboard as well. We're going to go with the uh, um, Tiger King theme and bring up a tiger sculpture that she did. So I'm going to cycle through a number of her images and then also show you Leah herself with one of her sculptures. And that is our local artist, Leah Hughes. And if you saw those were shots from her Instagram that she did get permission for us to use. If you'd like to follow her artwork, it's LR Hughes Studio on Instagram. One other artist that she suggested for us was Warren King. Just a few images I'm going to show of his, but he also makes all these sculptures all out of cardboard and they are amazing. So I'm going to pull up a lion here first and then just a couple images of his artwork. And this is Warren King. Right. So those are our cardboard artists I wanted to share with you, once again showing that it's not the material, it's how you use it. So I hope you all have enjoyed today's Live Art Mini. Like I said, get out there and experiment, grab some cardboard boxes, grab some glue, grab your scissors, play around with it. You know, you can start with something simple like this. If you wanted to turn this into a mask, you could easily just kind of poke a hole off into the side here. Now one thing I was going to say as I wrap things up, if you want to make a mask, you don't want to have your hole too close to the edge. Since cardboard is fairly flexible and it does break down, you don't want to tear into it. So we just kind of poke a hole with a pencil on one side, poke a hole here on the other side, take some string, I've got some yarn here, you can get really inventive with different materials you've got hanging around the house. We're just going to tie this through, secure it into a knot. You want to have someone help you out too. As you pull it around the back of your head, you want to make sure that it fits really snug so it doesn't fall off or it's not sagging down like that. So ask your friend for some help. Ask a family member at home, whoever is hanging out with you during quarantine time, and then have some fun making masks. I'm going to wrap things up today by saying thank you and for joining us today. Like I said, if you look up in the links on the comment page, you'll find our other live art minis in the YouTube page. And we're here every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Now, I do want to say check out the links in the comments for our online store as well. One thing that we can do while Inside Out Studio is closed is that we've started an online store. That way we sell the artwork for the artist. 50% still goes back to the artist themselves for every sale that we do online, just like it is when the store is open itself. So you are still supporting Inside Out Studio artists when you shop online. Uh, one other event that we do have coming up is with the Greater Hamilton Chamber. They have this Friday and Saturday created an online store for the local businesses around Hamilton. 
And it's going to be Mother's Day theme. So if you're thinking about things that you want to get for mom, think about shopping online or having things dropped off to you or you can pick up locally, uh, check out these online stores. Can't speak enough about supporting small businesses. Those dollars are going directly back into the pockets of the building owners and their families and store owners. So check out that chamber event. It's all day on Friday as well as Saturday. And myself and Kim from Inside Out Studio, we have a slot at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So we're going to be going live with the Greater Hamilton Chamber event online. So check it out. Um, happy art making, happy cardboard mask making. Uh, tell me if you'd like to see Mr. Joe Exotic pop up at future events, maybe at the Chamber event on Friday. I don't know. You'll have to wait and see. But thanks for tuning in, and happy arting. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.